Lyndon and Millie Matthews run 800 deer and 1,500 sheep on dry hill country at Waikari. Their success with deer in this environment secured them the 2008 New Zealand Deer Industry Award for farming excellence. We had a university lecturer come here one day who informed us we couldn't run lactating hinds in a summer dry environment. We've since found that they do perform and they perform very, very well. So in, in our experience, the deer are performing well in, in a summer dry environment. The industry's been very good for three or four years now, but it's, it's probably one of the, the, the best kept secrets in New Zealand agriculture that uh, we have enjoyed uh, good returns for three or four years, but I guess everybody remembers the, the year when prices were down. We had the opportunity to go to New York 18 months ago, I guess now, to talk to the people over there that were using New Zealand venison. It was a terrific opportunity for us to see where our product was ending up and it was a great opportunity for the restaurateurs over there to find out where their food was coming from. When we went over there expecting to get beaten up over food miles, the reality was people wanted to know about safe food. They wanted to know where their food came from, how it was being produced, was it being produced in a sustainable manner, but ultimately they wanted to know was their food safe. I guess what impressed the people of New York was the naturalness of, of the food we produce over here. It's, it's essentially just range fed. The deer behind us are wieners. They're what we call our third mob. They're a mixture of animals produced out of an AI program and animals that are produced for our velvet mob. At Pukatera Deer, our focus is primarily on venison. Venison is the bread and butter of our business and to do venison successfully we have to grow our animals as quickly as we can to produce them for the market. We target autumn weights very, very strongly. We would expect to wean in the order of 55 to 60 kilo and then in the autumn we would expect to, uh, to put about 23 kilos on average on them so that come the 1st of June we, we do our way up then and we would expect to have a third of our animals up to about 80 kilo. Our whole farming business is built around making sure that we've got quality feed in the autumn for our weaners to go on to, so that when they weaned at the end of February, they go on to, to paddocks that have been shut up all summer. And these paddocks are a mixture of lucerne and prairie grass and chicory, very, very high quality feed. And over that, that period through the autumn, they'll graze those paddocks down. And at that time, we expect them to put on 270 grams a day we weigh them on the 1st of June. We can then predict what date that we will kill them in the spring. Uh, the winter, we, we know they'll do 11 kilos of gain over the winter, about 110 grams a day. Doesn't really seem to matter what we do, they'll, they'll do that. And um, so, so for us, the, the job is done by the 1st of June. The, the, that autumn period is so critical to, for us, for, for our, our wiener operation. These are our velveting stags. We started off with venison. All the theory suggested that in a summer dry environment, velveting stags fitted the pasture curve a lot better. So we wanted to try and add some velvet to the mix of our deer farming operation. About six years ago now, we decided to buy some hinds that had a genetic base of, of velvet. And from there, we've started breeding up our velveting operation. We're starting to see the results of it. It takes, takes a while and we're now starting to see the, the best of our two-year-old stags are cutting 3.7 kilo, which is very exciting. Bringing velvet stags into the farming operation created another class of stock and it created uh, another farming activity we had to build into our system. A simple system should have as few enterprises as possible, but I guess the trade-off is that we've got a spread of risk. When we initially embarked into the velvet program velvet was uh, velvet prices were poor. They're certainly better now with the united approach with New Zealand farmers generally getting together to sell their velvet as one organisation. We've certainly seen better returns this year and uh, the, the velvet I, I guess forms about 20% uh, of our farming operation and, and at least 20% of our income. At Pukatera Deer, we think it's absolutely vital that you have a commitment to one processor. We currently supply the Alliance Meat Company and we enjoy a very, very good relationship with them. We contract to supply them with venison uh, every two weeks from the 1st of September through to Christmas. 
Yeah, we also supply them with, with our lamb and it's an arrangement that, that works very, very well and we're, we're very pleased with it. Before we expanded the deer operation, we were very focused on sheep and we spent six years selecting for eye muscle and we're certainly seeing the returns now in terms of improved meat yield from the sheep. We're now applying that philosophy to our, our deer operation with the venison. We started off using hybrid stags over our hinds and we're now moving more and more to a deer improvement genetic base with stags that give us high growth rates and, and high yield. The process has been slow but we're certainly starting to see the results now and we're seeing animals that are uh, achieving killable weights earlier and that's um, just making our business um, more efficient. The big breakthrough for us was finding a pasture mix that worked in our environment. There was a farmer in this district that had a, his, his own brew, the, the Winton mix, that has proved to work extremely well in this dry environment. And essentially, it's a mixture of prairie grass and, and lucerne, but it, it's not only the pasture species, it's how you treat them. Everything you do is so different to conventional farming. For a start off, we sow in the spring, and there's a reason for that, because with the rising soil, temperature is better for the establishment of the legumes and we're targeting legumes so that rising soil temperature was absolutely critical. The next thing was having the discipline to stay off those paddocks over the summer. This is, the, uh, this is our pasture renewal program we're talking about. So this is when we, we set out to establish a new paddock, we want the paddock to last 10 years. So the first step is to sow it out in the spring and then just leave it shut up for the summer. And then in the autumn, when you've got no feed, you come into these paddocks, you graze them down, the stock trample a lot of it in, you get a lot of uh, waste material on the ground and that's not necessarily bad either because that's, um, that's helping to build up the organic matter in the soil. It's also providing a, a layer to help trap the moisture in the ground. So I, I think it's all these things that it, it's not just the pasture species but it's the management around these pasture species that are adding to the success of being able to manage this dryland environment well. We find running deer and sheep side by side, it's quite complementary, but we refer to it as the flywheel effect, and, and uh, it's all about prioritising the, the classes of stock to the feed available to us. So at certain times of the year, the weaner deer will have priority, and then the ewes that are lambing have priority, and then after that, the hinds have priority. So we have to ensure that we meet our production targets and that animals are going off the farm to make space available for the next class of stock to feed on. But the short answer is that the deer and the sheep are very, very complementary to each other. and, and I guess in the back of it all, it, it also spreads our risk. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.